Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you're doing super well out there and staying safe and healthy. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here on YouTube showing how to edit your photos using various software products. And today I am in Luminar 4 and I'm playing with luminosity masks again. I've done a number of videos about them recently and a number of you have said, hey man, I like these and you know, good questions, good feedback and that sort of thing. So here's another one. Um, in this time uh, or in this video, I've got a sunset, so I'm editing a uh, photo using luminosity masks to enhance a sunset. So I'm, I'm focused on enhancing the color and making that sunset really pop using a luminosity mask, but at the same time, I'm really just only using luminosity masks for my edits. So let me show you. Here's my base photo. You can see on the right-hand side, I've got a number of layers. Um, here's my base photo. This is the Charles Bridge in Prague, and there it is after my edits with luminosity masks. So I'm going to scare myself by resetting all these filters back to zero. I've got my trusty notes written down. I get it, there's history, I could always go back, but it still makes me nervous when I reset everything to zero. But anyway, I'm gonna reset it and we're gonna jump into doing this photo edit right now. Okay, so here's my base layer and there you go, uh, edit, unedit, so no edits done. The first thing I do is actually use the light tool and that's something I do pretty much on every photo now is I start with the light tool. I do some very basic adjustments and I know I said this is only using luminosity mask. I'll do this and then the rest of it is luminosity mask. So first thing I do is get a little bit of contrast in the photo. I think I went to about 30 or 31. And I took down the highlights. Uh, they're pretty bright as you can see in the sky. So I wanna bring those down a little bit. And I wanna lift the shadows a little bit as well. That's kind of the balancing act that I generally start photos with is basically add a little bit of contrast, balance out the highlights and shadows a little bit. So basically I went from that to that, which is really not much of a change, but it's basically my starting point. Okay, now I'm gonna go add a adjustment layer. So plus add new adjustment layer, and I'm gonna get back over here to essentials. And once again, I'm gonna go on the light tool, and I'm gonna look at my notes. I'm actually taking the tint, uh, excuse me, the temperature to negative two, and the tint to like plus 18. It is a sunset, I'm bringing up those sunset colors, I should say 18, uh, and for me, sunset colors often involve moving that tint slider around a little bit. So I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna take the highlights down again. So this is a negative 50 this time. And next I go into color. And over here in color, I'm just bumping up both of these by about 20 or so. So I think I did about 20 there. And you know, roughly about 20, 21 here on Vibrance. You can see it's impacting the, uh, the color, of course, because I'm bumping up saturation and Vibrance. And then I'm going over here to Landscape Enhancer, I'm getting Golden Hour, and I'm going to about 35. So something about like that. Now I've got all those edits done on this layer. I'm gonna go up to this layer, I'm gonna say Edit and Mask, and I'm actually gonna create a Luminosity Mask. So if you haven't um, used Luminosity Mask before, if you're not familiar with them, this video is not gonna go into detail about what they are at a high level, I will just tell you, it's a mask that Luminar will generate for you automatically, and that mask is based on light values. So the mask um, will apply more heavily to the brighter parts and less heavily to the darker parts. And so what I just did was basically some color and temperature and tint kind of stuff. I want that to apply to the highlights. So that's why I'm using a luminosity mask. So I'm gonna hit luminosity mask. It'll create this for you automatically. It takes a couple of moments, and then it'll apply those edits based on the mask onto your photo. And there you go. So let me show you the before. There's the photo without any edits and after. So what a luminosity mask does, let me show you. To show a mask, you have to click on brush. So I hope that doesn't confuse you. But that's a luminosity mask. As you can see, where it's darker red, the mask is more heavily applied, right? Which means your edits are more visible or more heavily applied. In the darker areas, it's less heavily applied, right? The lighter pink areas, um, like the bridge and the, the, I'll call it the skyline, the city of uh, Prague and Prague Castle and all that, those darker areas um, have less pink in them, which means they have less um, application of the mask, which means the color edits I did on this adjustment layer are gonna apply there uh, to a lesser extent. So that's why I use luminosity mask. It allows me to kind of separate the highlights and the shadows and apply edits to them somewhat individually. As you can see, it's not 100%, but it's a much more subtle implementation. And besides, for this layer, it was all about the color, and I wanted the color to go into mostly the sky and the water, and Luminosity Mask does a great job of that for me. 
Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go and add another adjustment layer, and this one's gonna have a lot of stuff on it. So I'm gonna start on the light tool, and I'm gonna go warmer here, about 20, and something about like that, and I'm gonna go to about 10 here. Contrast gets about a 10 as well, so something about like that. Uh, let's see, AI Enhance, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna give that about a 30. 30, 30, 30, there we go. Um, that's AI Accent, which I absolutely love to use. And AI Structure is gonna get about a 20. So here we go, just a little bit of structure across the photo. I feel like it gives it a little bit more depth. It's, uh, it's some, to, uh, to me it operates a little bit like the Clarity Slider, not entirely, but um, color next is Saturation's like a 25, and Vibrance is about a 15 or so, there you go. So you can see the photos coming to life. It's getting more color and more depth and that sort of thing, uh, but I'm not done. So next I'm gonna pop over here and I'm gonna get mystical and I'm gonna give that a 30. So there we go. Uh, shadows stay at 25. I'm gonna take the warmth down to about a negative five. So truth be told, all the edits I'm doing on this layer are actually part of a preset or a look that I've built. Um, I may release some looks, I'm not sure yet. Um, I've got a number of them that I've been kind of playing with. So I may release a looks pack for Luminar 4, I just haven't decided yet. Uh, next I'm gonna go to Orton, I'm gonna give that about a 25. And down here in Saturation, I'm gonna give that about a 15 within the Orton effect. Um, and the next thing is Color Enhancer over here on the Pro tab. So I'm basically hitting every uh, tab on this layer. So I skip Brilliance and Warmth and Color Contrast. Uh, split color warmth, I'm giving that a 15 on the warmth and about a five on cool. And then I'm going into advanced settings. I'm going into one of my favorites, which is color balance. So here I'm gonna give, I'm just gonna type these in. I'm gonna give that a five. I'm gonna give a negative five to this one and a positive five, nope, a negative five to that one. So that's within shadows. So basically, um, as you can see, I'm just moving some of these things around. That's a five and two negative fives in shadows. Next, I'm gonna go to midtones, and I'm gonna give that a five here. Boom, and magenta green is gonna get a negative 10. There we go. And I'm gonna get a, a five to this one. Five, there we go. So basically what I did, and that doesn't look good, right? But uh, keep in mind, we're gonna mask it in a second. So with shadows, I basically, made it a little bit more red, uh, a little bit more magenta, and a little bit more yellow, right? And then mid-tones, I went a little bit red away from the cyan, and magenta, uh, I took a little bit more magenta, and then a little bit more blue away from the yellow. So those are, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I didn't do anything in highlights, so that it stays the same. So those are all my edits on this layer. There's the before, you can see much more tame, and after, pretty much over the top. I mean, it's a fairly intense look, but that's where a luminosity mask comes in because once again, I'm gonna hit a luminosity mask and you'll see here in a moment that that's gonna apply that based on the masking values and it's gonna be a much more subtle implementation of that look. And there you go. As you can see, I mean, if you remember, I can't really go back and show you what it was like without removing the mask, but it was fairly over the top. Um, and yet, when you apply the luminosity mask, it applies it in such a you know much more gentle way. And frankly, I think it looks pretty awesome. So um, I was pretty fired up at this point. However, I decided I was gonna do one more layer. So I went and added a new adjustment layer. So we did the base layer with uh, just a couple of minor edits in the light tool. We did adjustment layer one, which was really um, just kind of a color pop and a couple things like that applied with a luminosity mask. Uh, which is gonna put it more heavily in the highlights. Adjustment layer two, I came back and did a whole bunch of stuff, which was basically a look, but I, I broke it down by filter or tool for you. And uh, that was a serious color pop among other things. And yet once I applied the luminosity mask, it gave me a much more balanced look to the photo. So there's that. And now I'm on my final layer, adjustment layer three. So I'm gonna go over here and I've got to look at what I did. So in the light tool, I'm gonna to go in and I'm gonna give smart contrast of 31. Now here's where I'm, I'm gonna do a couple of little tricks. Um, and that is, I'm not gonna do a luminosity mask for this layer, I'm gonna do luminosity mask for these individual tools because you can do that, especially um, on the light tool. You can't do that on the base layer, but on subsequent adjustment layers, you can mask in the light tool. So here I'm gonna go in and do a luminosity mask. And that's because I just wanted to add a little bit of contrast to some of the brighter parts of the photo. I don't want the contrast really applying across 
the, the areas that are already dark, which is kind of the cityscape and the bridge. As you can see here, the contrast becomes a little bit too much, but with the luminosity mask, it's gonna apply it more heavily to the brighter areas, give me a little bit more pop and contrast in those parts of the photo. And there you go. So I can show you, uh, because I haven't done anything on this layer, I can turn off this layer and you can see before and after. It's, it's fairly subtle to be honest, but it's just a look um, that I liked in the photo. And uh, anyway, that was something to think about is that you can go in and add these luminosity masks, not just at the layer level, which you can do and works quite well as you saw, but also on the filter or tool level. Uh, next up, I went to AI Accent. And here I went to 45, so I'm just gonna type that in. Um, now, what that does is that brightens up a whole lot of the photo, but I really just wanna brighten up kind of the dark areas. So I'm gonna go in once again and create a luminosity mask. Now this luminosity mask is gonna apply it to the brighter parts of the photo. However, that's not really what I wanna do. I don't wanna brighten up the bright parts, I wanna brighten the dark parts. So there you go, there it is. Now what I wanna do is go into the mask itself and I'm gonna go in the masking tool, and here I can just show you the mask, right? There's the luminosity mask, but that's not what I want. I wanna brighten the dark part, so I actually need to invert this one. So if I say invert, then the mask looks like that. So in other words, AI accent, which is gonna brighten, uh, among other things, but let's think of it in terms of brightening the photo, it's gonna brighten the areas that have more heavily mask here. So you can see that now it's been applied that way, in other words, I created a luminosity mask to separate the brighter and darker parts, and the AI accent was applying to the bright parts, but when I invert it, it's now applying to the dark parts. So there's the before. You can see it's a little bit darker across the, I'll call it the skyline. It's not really a skyline, but you know what I mean, the city itself, and the bridge a little bit darker, and now it's a little bit lighter. Um, so I could now, I've got the mask applied, I could come in and just bump that up even more if I wanted to, and it'll apply primarily to the uh, area where the mask is, right? So I've had people ask me, hey, do you do luminosity mask first and then go make your adjustments? Or do you do the adjustments and then apply the mask? It doesn't matter, you can do it either way. I tend to apply the adjustments um, because um, I just like to see what it looks like beforehand. And then when I apply the mask, I can see how much more subtle of an implementation I have because of the mask. But it's the same, different. You're gonna get there either way. It's just how I like to do it. So. I've even raised that to 60. I'll go back to 45, which is where I was, but basically the AI accent brightened the photo, but only brightened the dark parts because I created a luminosity mask and inverted it. So it's a little trick. And then golden hour, I wanna come back in here with golden hour. And in this case, I go to about 30. And once again, I'm gonna do a luminosity mask. So I hit that. And instead of applying across the whole photo, once again, the luminosity mask is gonna go more heavily into the brighter parts. And guess what? The brighter parts are the sky and the reflection of the sky in the water. And that's where I want the golden hour to be. So it's basically doing the masking for me, which I love. And it's gonna take care of that and apply that luminosity mask more heavily in the bright parts. So that golden hour pop that I'm adding here as a finishing touch is more heavily applied in the sky and the reflection of the sky in the water. And there you go. So if I turn that off, there's before and after. It's just a little subtle pop. And then this is something I often do is once I've got the luminosity mask applied, I may come in here and say, well, maybe I want a little bit more um, and just start dragging the sliders and just kind of see what happens. Um, I was fine with it at 30, but you know, you can make adjustments to your sliders after you've, you know, before or after you've created the mask, it doesn't matter. So I will drag them, then add the mask and then I will go back in sometimes and drag the sliders a little bit more one way or the other just to see what I get to. But that's my final photo and uh, I like it quite a bit. One other thing you might want to do, and I'm just looking at it now, I didn't do this in my uh, previous image, but I'm looking at the sky and the sky is a little bit bright to me. So you might come in here and say, I'm gonna set orientation with adjustable gradient, by the way, drag this up you know, something like that. I want this middle line, which separates top from bottom, to be kind of close to the horizon. It's not a perfectly flat horizon. It doesn't totally matter. And I might just pull down the exposure a little bit. And there you go. You can see how it enhances the mood. Um, that's a fun little trick, uh, especially when you have a semi-flat horizon. Um, and, uh, you know, setting the orientation. You can expand the gradient zone, that sort of thing. That may help, but that's a way to help, help sort of finish off the image. In fact, I might come to the bottom and actually take the exposure down a tiny bit um, just to give it a little bit of mood. But 
That's really how I have used luminosity masks in my photos to isolate specific areas using luminosity masks across layers to apply a bunch of edits, then with a single mask to mask them in more heavily to the highlights or the shadows, depending on what you do. And then also using luminosity masks within specific tools, also known as filters. And those allow me to more specifically control how the edits are applied to my photo. That's the power of luminosity masks. That's why I like them so much. I'll keep doing more videos about this. I'm going to go get the eraser and get like this little spot, get the, whatever that was and that uh, that are floating in the uh, the river Volat Voltava, something. I can't remember the name of the river. Some of you will know. Hopefully you've been there. If not, please go to Prague. You're going to love it when, you, when we can travel again. Um, but that's it for this video, my friends. I hope that this luminosity masking video has helped you and uh, maybe gives you some ideas. Feel free to give me a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you really soon with more videos, my friends. Talk to you soon. Have a great day. Take care of yourself out there, and adios.